So you want to be a millionaire. Does it matter how you get there? Let's consider a totally hypothetical situation for just a moment. You're sitting in your million dollar home, maybe enjoying a drink on a hot day. Your son comes running wide eyed and asks you if you can play them in the pool. You go for it. Then you recline a bit and decide to check your phone. A few messages. One from the charity that will put your name on the building. Another from your lawyers. Maybe it was that suit from your old investors. Maybe it's the lawsuit against your old pharmaceutical business that preyed on the addictions or illnesses of others. Or maybe that partner who you wronged for your own selfish personal gain. Or the employees that broke their backs trying to make a living wage without safe working conditions while you took tens of millions of dollars to the bank. The scenarios are endless, but you get the idea. So, you want to be a millionaire. Does it matter how you get there? Does it matter how many heads you stomp on in order to climb? Does it matter how many ideas you steal? Does it matter how many people you exploit? Or how many casualties you create with your opinion? You want to be a millionaire, but does it matter how you get there? We learn a huge lesson from the Israelites post-miraculously leaving Egypt. Each of the 12 tribes were encamped in a specific formation, three in the front, three in the side, three in the back, three on the other side, and each tribe flew a flag with its own color and a letter. To simplify it, we'll do in English. A-Y-Y was in the front, on the side was V-T-A, then in the back was R-C-H-K, and then on the other side was M-K-V. Together, the first letter of each one formed the word Avram, and then the second letter Yitzchak, and then the third spelled Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isn't Avram with a hey, an H? It's Avraham in Hebrew. The hey representing God's divine presence dwelled in the middle of the camp, when the nation is encamped around shared values, the Torah. In the case of the Israelites, it's the Torah which is the glue, the national mission which keeps them together. They accepted this constitution, so to speak, with a national mission, put it into action, and deeply understand it. Don't steal. Don't murder. Practice family values and morality. Don't eat pork. Give and bring honor to your parents, and so on and so forth. The shared values and shared mission united the 12 tribes together more than any flag could ever do. The nation had a charter to be different, to be holy, to raise the bar of humanity. Of course, from time to time, we all fall short of our mission, especially when the aspiration is so high, whether it be an individual level or a national level. But our national mission-centric existence works when we're centered around the shared values. I suppose any country would do well to ask this question. What are your shared values? What is the mission and value system that keeps the country together? What are those values which unite us? That's on a national level. But the individual can ask themselves the same question as well. Let me explain. In Rabbi Yehuda Halevi's famous work, The Kuzari, he explains that each individual is like a mayor of their city, like a governor of their state, with many different citizens, all different types, artists, athletes, academics, food connoisseurs, masters of self-defense, healers, social workers, teachers, students, givers. You, the governor of your inner world, must take care of your entire self. All of the citizens of your world need to be taken care of. Otherwise, if you neglect them, when you call upon them, they will not be there for you. But why not take this concept a step further? All these citizens, all these diverse citizens in your world, what shared values, what shared mission does all of your dynamic self rally around? See, all of these citizens get pulled in different directions. Everyone has different aspects of self, of our personalities, that have different interests. And sometimes there's a conflict. Sometimes there's friction. There's different directions we get pulled in. But when there's a shared mission, when there's shared values, everything can be aligned even amidst these inner conflicts. Internal conflict arises when different aspects of self are in conflict. So deeply understanding the diverse citizens of your world, of your inner world, enables you to guide yourself to live a happier, healthier, more harmonious life. What are those values? You want to be a millionaire, but it matters how you get there. So where does one start? Sometimes the most challenging part is getting the courage to simply begin.